Hey guys, welcome to This Week Today. My name is Chase Majerus, and yes, we are not in our normal setting. We are currently in my gaming den, or my cave, or whatever you want to call it. This is where I game, all right? Um, we have a lot to talk about today, especially for those who are interested in what happens behind the scenes in uh, mortgage and housing. This is, this is not like normal consumer information. This is for the people who work in this industry. So let's get into it. Okay, so our first story isn't really news. Um, again, this is a this is the piece I found on Housing Wire, and uh, I wanted to share this because it has a lot of information for the next evolutionary step in how consumers want to or will be getting uh, a mortgage. And it starts with this: a single platform. All right, Housing Wire writer Michael Ferris breaks down this whole idea of a single platform in three parts. Part one the point of sale. Over the past few years, there's been a focus on creating a point of sale and consumer portal technology where the consumer's borrowing journey really begins. COVID has totally accelerated uh, this whole thing in development and lenders are focused on enhancing and improving uh, from the front end of that business. But of course, what about the back end? Hello, who cares if you can complete a loan application in a few minutes if the rest of the loan takes, what, 45 days? Part two speed and ease. So there's obviously pressure to get things done faster. I mean, shoot, millennials have grown in the age of effective technology, online banking, the Amazon effect. People want data and products now. So when you can process data like verification of assets, verification of income and verification of employment, etc., in an event and data-driven system instead of form-based, everything tends to move a lot faster, obviously. Part three, end-to-end -end lending done right. In the long run, the future is up for grabs uh, for those lenders who have the tech stack to meet the needs of the clients that they want to work with, and usually millennials. That's why I mentioned millennials. And lenders are realizing that this means choosing an end-to-end, -end, all-in-one mortgage lending solution, origination system, software, whatever you want, app, whatever you want to call it. Fortunately, that technology does exist right now and can meet the needs of what lenders want for their consumers and what consumers want. This isn't even an ad for S1 Connect, all right? I'm not even kidding. I am telling you that there are lenders out there that already do this kind of thing. They're just not household names yet. Don't you hate it when you look at your weather app and you, f man, it says it's beautiful outside. We, we gotta go to a beach. It, today's the day we're going to the beach. It's going to be beautiful. And by the time you get there, it's like not beautiful. It's cloudy. It's a little rainy, maybe. Uh, well, that same thing is kind of happening for renters right now. Rent has pushed prices way beyond they would have ever been if the coronavirus pandemic had never occurred, according to a report from Zillow Seattle. In its latest market report from Zillow, it shows nationally typical monthly rent rose to $1,843 in July, rising 9.2% or $156 above July 2020 and surpassing June's record appreciation. Odetta Kushi, who's the deputy chief economist for First American, literally said, owning a home is now cheaper than renting in all 50 of the top US markets. Thank you guys for joining me on This Week Today live from the den from the gaming den where i play apex and call of duty and all sorts of games like that thank you guys again um we'll probably be back to normal next week until then please like comment subscribe check out other episodes tell your families and friends and we'll see you then